Mom is in Control, episode 315. Okay, guys, today we are on day seven of the 12 days of mothering. Um, Every day I'm talking about another universal law, one of the 12 universal laws that govern our lives. And the 12 days of mothering is a spinoff on the 12 days of Christmas. I started this series just simply by um, getting annoyed by all of the overwhelm and burnout and chaos that you know, people just playing victim to their lives of, oh, look at me, look how stressed out and overwhelmed I am. And the truth is, it's for me anyways, it's an opportunity. Um, it's a pleasure to be alive. It's, it's a privilege to be alive. And that's how I truly feel about my life. Um, And I'm going to share something with you. Today is all about the law of attraction. Uh, And a lot of these, you might be hearing me stumble because it might be like a big emotional episode today. Um, But before we dive in, I just want to say to you that this, the 12 days of mothering have been really um, eye opening for me. Because as I'm sharing these laws with you, I'm being reminded of them. And sometimes I'm doing a little research before I'm podcasting about it. And by doing that, I, you know, it stays stuck in your mind. And then you're thinking about it. My husband and I took a walk tonight and um, we were watching the sunset. And I said, honey, do you know what it is, what day it is tomorrow? And he said, yes, I know. And he didn't even ask me what it what what day it was and i simply just smiled and tomorrow is the official day um 5 years ago that i found out i had cancer and this year i mean i don't know why but in the cancer world it's like 5 days and you're free i don't know why in the medical world they do that because that's Probably, I know research-wise, they think you're, you're good to go, but I think it's a bunch of horse shit, but whatever. Um, so five years to people is like a milestone. And, and I'm just sitting here thinking, how did I get here? Feel, being alive is a privilege. Not everyone makes it, right? Actually, nobody's going to make it, FYI. But... Um, You don't win a battle of cancer or chronic disease. You don't lose a battle. You're not fighting a battle. It's it's a disease, and there's no guarantees. It doesn't matter how much alternative medicine you do, integrative, anything, how many green juices you drink, if you're doing enough yoga. A lot of it is fear-based anyways. If you're going to yoga and drinking your green juices and you're doing it from a place of fear, that is not going to manifest a higher frequency in your body. But that's a whole nother topic. But my point is, five years ago tomorrow, I walked into that emergency room. They did a CT on my abdomen and did blood work. And she looked at me and said, Heather, you have cancer. And I knew it. I knew in that moment that I was sick. And the thing was, I avoided so much in my life because I thought to be a good mother, I had to sacrifice. And I don't think it's a coincidence that today is the day in the 12 days of mothering that I need to talk about the law of attraction. And I just, hmm, I'm like on the eve of the five-year anniversary. And since then, I've lost a lot of really good people in my life to this disease and other diseases, whether it's mental illness, whether it's addiction, cancer. And there is something that I do struggle with. I guess you could call it survivor guilt or thriver guilt. And one thing that I'm personally working through is as we continue to manifest in our lives and raise our vibration and feel better, 
Um, I see people who are not coming along for the ride. And whether they're in my personal life or um, in my inner circle or my outer circles or just people I see on the streets. And that's something I really struggle with, with someone who, or as somebody who loves to give back, you know, with the philanthropist and the giver inside of me. And it's, you know, there's, there's the yin and the yang. There's the light and the dark to everything. And the dark side of being a compassionate, sensitive, empathetic person is sometimes we want to give, give, give too much. So learning to give to myself the counterintuitive approach, I talk about this all the time, the counterintuitive approach is giving to myself so that when my cup is full and overflowing, all of that extra can go to everybody else. Because I know what it feels like and the opposite when I give, 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 and my cup is cracked. And I'm, you know, I know as women, we can hold a lot. We can hold a lot of shit. And I know I could go without for a very long time before I crack. My resiliency factor is very high. So to change the current of that, it's strong. The resistance of that is strong. So every day I show up, every day I try to do something better to raise my vibration, and every day... I just try to become another version, of, a, the better version of myself. And what I don't mean better, let's just say more in alignment, more energetically vibration, a higher vibration, because everything is energy. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me there. I made it through. <laughs> so um, in the spirit, I'm going to talk quickly about the time and energy intensive and a lot of people have been emailing me and saying, I really want to do your time and energy intensive, um, but I feel like I need, I don't know if that's what I need or if I need long-term um, coaching. So the time, let me just give you an example. The time and energy intensive is a four-hour intensive. There is some pre-work that you do get once you register for the, uh, for the program. And that's going to be helping you get clear on what do you want in your life? Because too often we're stuck talking about what we don't want. And I'll dive more deeper into that in this podcast about how to change that in a second. So you know what you don't want in your life. You're living it, right? You want more time. You want more energy. You want to feel more in alignment. So there's um, a module on that. As soon as you register, you'll gain immediate access to that. And then on Saturday, January 5th, we're going to be hanging out for four hours in an intimate group. We're going to be talking about all of this, and I'm going to show you the specific process that I use for energetic time management. I don't care if you are a stay-at-home mom or a billion-dollar CEO. What I do care is that you feel alive. Because when you feel alive, the energy that you have inside of your being radiates out in the world. And whether you are a stay-at-home mom, which is one of the hardest jobs in this entire universe, I don't care what anyone says, or you are out there um, leading a team, people depend on you and you are a leader. So when you show up differently... With your time and your energy, you can lead better and your life gets easier. So everything that I'm teaching you during this time and energy intensive, we're going to go through the process. The reason why it's four hours is so that you have that space um, together collectively as a group. You'll also have some hot seat coaching and things like that. So you can check that out at heatherchauvin.com forward slash intensive. Some of you have been inquiring about mastery, curious if that's opening in the new year, and it will be, and I'll be talking about that in a few weeks. Um, And the time and energy intensive is included in mastery. So if that's something you're interested in, then head on over to momisincontrol.com and simply just fill out your application, and then I'll get you on the phone for an intro call, and we'll just go from there. So it's not so much about you saying, is this a right fit for me? Don't worry about that. All I want to do is read your application and then we can get you on the phone for an intro call. So 
Head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash intensive for the time and energy intensive. Or if you want more in-depth and you want uh, mastery, more long-term coaching, then head on over to momisincontrol.com. Okay. Day, I said it was day seven, right? Okay. Day seven, the law of attraction. The most well-known universal law out of all 12 is the law of attraction. From the words you speak to your beliefs, you attract everything in your life through energy. You can even attract people into your life who have the same energetic frequency as you. Like attracts like. So whether it's negative or positive, everything you see in your life is what you've attracted. So some of that is like, wow, that's fucking awesome. And some of that is like, oh, not so awesome. Let me read this again. The most well-known universal law of, out of all 12 is the law of attraction. From the words you speak to your beliefs, you attract everything in your life through energy. You can even attract people into your life who have the same energy frequency as you. Like attracts like. So whether it's negative or positive, everything you see in your life is what you've attracted. This year, I lost a good friend to what I would call an energetic vibration um, increase. As I continued to keep moving forward, um, you know, some people just all of a sudden you just fall out of alignment with them. And it's like a grief. There's a loss. It's just not in alignment anymore. Also, this year, I decided um, not to drink, to stop drinking. It just did not, drinking has never been my thing, Um, but it was really, really hard on my system, on my body. And if I would have one drink, oh, I, I wouldn't even call it a hangover. I would go down this deep hole of depression, depending on what I drank. So I just decided I'm not gonna drink anymore. And I realized I was drinking, the only reason why I was drinking last year, because 2018 I didn't drink, um, so 2017, maybe five to ten times the whole year, I can't even say ten times, maybe five times I drank, the only reason why I did it was out of obligation and an expectation. The obligation and expectation of what someone else expected me to do. So when I cut it out and I said, I'm going to challenge myself and just see if I can go a whole year without drinking. I almost slipped up once or twice, and it was with the same person around me all the time. And this person was such a bad influence on me. Of course, they come from, like, my high school days. They just couldn't take no for an answer. And I'm still friends with this person. That's not the friend that I lost. But you begin to realize, why are these people in my life? Are they here because I'm convenient for them? It's comfortable. Our relationship is comfortable and and old. So, you know, they're just not used to, um, you know, I'm changing and they're not used to my evolution. But as you evolve and you grow, you will see new people will enter your life. Your life, like attracts like, the law of attraction. And sometimes you'll also attract the dark side of yourself and you're like, ah, where did this come from? So just know that as you grow and evolve, you're like a tree. Old leaves die off, new ones grow. That's like people in your life as well. And the more you grow, the more you'll see these people entering your life and leaving. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the strategies and actions when it comes to the law of attraction. Um, When I was new into my personal development journey, I had absolutely no idea what this was. People will even call it L-O-A, short form for law of attraction. No fucking clue. See it all over the place. and like, what the heck is L-O-A? That is law of attraction. So this year I actually got the law of attraction planner. Um, on the back of the book, it actually looks like it says freedom mastery. It uh, is very similar to the passion planner. I used to use that as my, my planner. But now it kind of has like some journal prompts and things like that in it. And I thought, this is cool. I, I'm getting more into, you know, talking about the law of attraction and, um, and energies and things like that. I've always been attracted to it, but just using that language now. Um, so it's a really, really cool planner if you're looking for one. So 
first things first, <laughs> I'll just, I'll continue to share my own journey with you um, and how this works. So kind of step one in the law of attraction, right? You like attracts like. So how do we get there, right? You're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like what I have in my life. Like things, a lot of things feel hard. They feel out of alignment. I'm struggling. I don't like this. So first you got to get clear on what matters most to you. Some people call this your life purpose. I think life purpose, um, that terminology is overused and people are like, I got to find my purpose. I got to find my purpose. What you're really trying to find is that, that sense of inner peace and contentment and, and seeking outside of yourself for something like that isn't necessarily going, that's not going to get it for you. You know this, right? You can't look outside of yourself for happiness. You can't look outside of yourself for that joy. You have to follow the breadcrumbs as I tell my clients. So what matters most to you? Get out your pen and paper. If you're driving, don't do that. Maybe come back and listen to this later. Text yourself, take a screenshot, send it to your partner or your friend and say, hold me accountable to listening to this um, podcast again so I don't forget about it. Do something to remind yourself. What matters to you? Write it down. What matters to you? Question mark. Give yourself two to three minutes to just write that out. What matters to me? I am statements. Love these. So we all know, or you might not know, what an old belief is, right? Limiting beliefs. I am fat. I am stupid. I'm not successful. I could never do that. These things that, you know, if you have this thought and you put that out into the universe and then you get nothing back, of course, of course, you're going to manifest that. Like attracts like. I am busy. I don't have any energy. It is so hard to parent this child. Of course, like attracts like. So we have to look at our thoughts and these I am statements. I am powerful. I am bold. I am abundant. I can fucking do this. I can write a book. I can run a marathon. I can hold space for my child when him or her is having an epic meltdown. I can get through the day without getting incredibly angry. I can handle this. The third thing is you need to set goals. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, goal setting. That's a whole nother conversation. And I don't, you don't have to set these big financial goals. Anything can be a little goal. Like it might be go to bed at a certain time. Wait till two o'clock to drink a coffee. That's one of my goals. Go to the doctors and get that weird mark on your back removed or that weird mole. That can be a goal. It doesn't need to be this big financial goal, this big weight loss goal, this run a marathon, this travel around the world. Those things are great and fabulous, but it doesn't need to be big, crazy goals. I have those on my list too, not going to lie. But the little goals, it's all the little steps that make up the big magic. So after you have, I got my list here, what matters to you, your I am statements, your goal setting, then you got to fucking prioritize. And this is where I'm going to go all mama coach on you. We prioritize what matters most to us. And remember how my first action step for you was get clear on what matters to you? I guarantee you what you are spending your time and energy on are not in alignment with what matters to you. I bet anything on that. Because most of the time, people are prioritizing um, other people's expectations rather than their own. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. You don't need to just completely, you know, cut everyone off and clear the blank slate. It's just little no's. Putting your phone away. 
setting space for creating space for yourself and actually following through with that action or strategy that you have on your to-do list. You have to prioritize your health, your money, your time, your energy, your relationships, your personal development. And if you don't, nothing's going to change. So then you have your vision. I talk about a vision. You can call it a vision board. I don't really like vision boards personally for myself. Um, But if that's your thing and you like them, then do it. You are not me. Be you. Don't try to be me or anybody else. Some people say it verbally. Some people write it down. Some people like to cut and paste. What do you want in your life? What's that vision? This is something that I teach inside the mastery program where we talk about how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? What, what does your house look like? What's your relationship with your partner, your children? How do you feel when you open your bank account? How do you feel when you go to work? What does that look like for you? And then once you have the plan, you have to create, or sorry, once you have the vision, you have to create the strategy. <clears throat> and the strategy or the plan, that's where we go into the left side of the brain because we have to have that to-do list. But it needs to be the strategic action. It needs to be the specifics that we need to take to get there. So having your plan, having your strategy that's in alignment with your vision is how you're going to get there. And more importantly, we need to let go of the the old unsupportive stories that are not in alignment with that vision. And this is where the real work starts. You can buy the planners, you can hoard them, you can have the journals, you can write in them. But if we're not letting go of those old parts of ourselves and realizing that a lot of this is grief and loss, there's a lot of sadness in there. These stories have been with us for so long, and now it's like it's saying, you no longer serve me, thank you. I have to let you go. And I always say the magic happens in the action. So that's what you have to do. So as you continue to take action in your life, you begin to manifest what you desire. And feeling good along the way is really, really, really important. This was a part of the law of attraction process that I didn't understand for a really long time. Feeling good in my life was something I probably experienced in the last five years post-illness. Before that, <clears throat> I could not remember when I felt good, even as a child, So allowing your children to know what it's like to feel good in their life is so, so, so important. Um, And giving yourself permission to do that as well. Because what we're being taught in society right now, especially for women, is go, 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 hustle, 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 push, 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 more, 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 bigger to-do list, check it off, burnout. Um, And I'm not buying into that story. And I think it's detrimental to society and it's not helping our children any. So when I started to feel good in my life, whether it was just simply changing my food patterns um, or my food habits, um, exercising, (coughs) these simple little strategies, I'm like, this feels too good to be true. Something bad's going to happen. The rug's going to be pulled out from under me. Oh my gosh, I'm out of debt. This feels weird. Oh, I should fill the credit card up again. Nope. You sit with that. Sit with the discomfort of feeling good. And when you sit with the discomfort of feeling good, you create new neural pathways in your brain and your energetic vibration, uh, sorry, your energy, uh, Lilla, <laughs> your energetic vibration rises. Law of attraction, like attracts like. And every day, which is why I'm still doing the work, and I don't mean working on this trip, I'm still doing the work while we're on this trip. I'm still 
writing in my journal. I'm still reading about personal development. I'm still eating. Well, eating hasn't been on par, but I'm doing a lot better than what I would typically do um, on a trip. I'm looking for those healthy options and not because I have to, because I want to. But I'm also giving myself permission to eat whatever the fuck I want to eat. But I'm not restricting and I'm not gorging and binging. I'm saying what feels good. But because I respect myself more, I respect my body, I respect my energy, I say no to more things that I would have said yes to years ago. Reflect and celebrate the last step. Reflect on where you've come from. Seriously, if you're an avid listener of this podcast and other podcasts and you read books and you are taking action steps, reflect on what has changed. Just because you're not where you want to be yet, which FYI, we're never going to be where we want to be because we're constantly evolving and growing. And if you're anything like me, you are an ambitious go-getter and there's always going to be that thought in your mind that nothing is ever good enough because you're always determined to become better, to do better, to make a bigger difference. Reflect and celebrate. The last thing I'm going to say is um, celebration is key. That's also something I'm personally working on. And why do we, why would you work so hard? Why would you, and what I mean by work so hard, I mean even that work so hard, but why would you be so intentional with your actions if you're not celebrating your success? Isn't that the freedom you crave to be, to do, to have, to make a difference? Celebrate the action that you've already taken. So the law of attraction, day seven. Like attracts like. Ask yourself, what am I attracting in my life that is no longer serving me and how can I change that? And what am I attracting in my life that I am loving and want more of? That's what I got for you today. If you guys are interested in working with me in 2019, then head on over. If you're interested in the Time and Energy Intensive, you could check that out. That is January 5th, Saturday, January 5th. More information on that is at Heather Chauvin, last name spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-M.com forward slash intensive. And if you are interested in mastery or any other coaching programs that I offer, then check that out at momisincontrol.com and simply fill out the application and we will be in touch. Talk soon, ladies.